Hát sok szeretettel üdvözlünk benneteket itt a mai cosplay-es kerekasztal beszélgetésünkön. A mai panelünknek a sajátossága, hogy ugye vannak cosplay-es vendégeink, akik külföldről érkeztek hozzánk. Tegnap beszélgethettünk a vendégekkel Csehországból, most pedig az olasz cosplay-es vendégeinkkel fogunk beszélgetni. Mindannyian nagyon neves cosplay-esek, és nagyon ismertek Olaszországban. És hát reméljük, hogy sok-sok olyan dolgot megtudunk tőlük a mai napon, ami ugye érdekes lehet számotokra. Úgyhogy akkor felszólítanám őket a színpadra. Mogut szeretném kérni a színpadra. Mogu, please come. Nagy tapsot szeretnék kérni neki. Mogu az egyik legismertebb koszpléjes Olaszországban, és nagyon sok versenyen lett részt, magazinoknak pózol. Ő egy igazából tervező, tehát nagyon-nagyon sok helyen megfordult már vendégként. Please take a seat. Um, a következő, akit beszeretném mutatni nektek, Daisy. Daisy, please come to the stage. Ő szintén, nagy tapsot kérnék szépen neki, ő szintén ő ismert koszpréjes Olaszországban, nagyon sok helyre járt ő is, és ugye, ha kíváncsiak vagytok a munkáikra, egyébként megtekinthetitek, pultjuk van, itt nem is olyan messze a nézőtér mellett, mindenképp nézzetek szét, mert fantasztikus koszpréjeik vannak. És van még nekünk Luce, Luce, please come to the stage. Ő szintén nagyon neves koszpléjes, jelmezés, ruhatervező ebben az iparban dolgozik, mindent saját maga készít, tehát szintén nagyon fantasztikus koszpléjai vannak. Oké, okay, so, um, I have a few questions prepared for today, and I think what most of the people would like to know here, like for how long are you cosplaying now, and how did you meet this hobby? Okay, I started in uh, 2006 in the Comic-Con in Napoli, in Italy, and uh, I discovered this hobby the, 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 the year before. Uh, one of my friends told me, ah, you know, some people go around uh, with, the, with the costume, uh, and I discovered this new world, and in 2006 I started with my first performance with the, the Mughal of Final Fantasy, Uh, do you know Final Fantasy? Final Fantasy? <laughs> okay, <laughs> so the, the Mughal, uh, the, the little bird, uh, and that's why my nickname uh, is Mogu Cosplay, uh, because people start to, talk, uh, start to um, um, name me like, like that. So now I'm Mogu Cosplay because of that. Well, actually, I didn't know that your name was uh, coming from, from this, so it's actually really nice to know. Oh yes, we got a nice. Okay, finally I can talk to. So uh, we can keep this really easy. So if you want to join in or have to something to say, just do so. So let's. Uh, what's your story? Um, okay, I started cosplaying in 2008, um, but I started to go to convention in 2005 actually. But I was really a child. I mean, in 2008 I was 17. So in 2005 I was like 15. And um, I saw this magic world full of colors and everything, and I was like, oh, I want to do this, I want to do this, I want to do this. And like after two years, I was like, yay, finally my first cosplay. And it was in Rome, of course, because I'm from, from Rome. And it was Romix. So, Daisy? So, um, I started into... 2012, so this is my 10th year, my 10th anniversary of oh, cosplay. That's actually long Pretty much in June, too. 10, so. 10 years. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and it was, uh, my very first convention was in Palermo, which is my hometown. Um, and I did, like, as my first cosplay, uh, a character from One Piece, which is my favorite anime. And I'm actually planning to do it again this June. Uh, Like, yeah, to celebrate. Um, but yeah, I discovered it through internet, actually, because I've always been a geek, basically, anime lover, uh, a gamer. But I didn't know about cosplay until, like, 2012. And I was like, what if there is, there is like, a convention like this in, in Sicily, too, in Italy, too? And there was one, so I just went straight and did, like, my first cosplay from scratch. Uh, it was very ugly. It was very badly made, uh, but I had so much fun, and I met so many friends, and yeah, I never stopped <laughs> since then. So, do you actually have then a lot of big conventions in in Italy? 
Because it's, it's, it's always in Rome, or you have it all over the place, or are there some famous ones? No, actually we have uh, really a lot. Most of the, conven the biggest conventions are actually around Italy, because there are one in the north, two in the south, one in the middle, one is like in the middle too, kind of. So they are kind of divided in, in all Italy. Okay, so it's mostly about anime or is it about, or is it a mix like you have a comic con, you have anime conventions, you have gaming, game themed conventions? Yes, there are some conventions that are most dedicated to comics, some conventions that are most dedicated to gaming, uh, but the biggest one has like a perfect mix of both, of, of, of everything. So when you are cosplaying, like, what, what, what is the thing that you love most about cosplay? Is it uh, creating the costume, wearing the costume on a convention or, or something, or photo shoots? So what's the, what's the thing you really love about cosplay? Um, making it, of course, and taking pictures with people. When you are at a convention and they hey, can I take a picture with you? Of course, I'm here for that. And that's, that's the best part. And of course, making it because you can, uh, you have, you, you can create. So it's, it's like the, the funny part. Um, so I've always been a creative person. Um, so I really love the, like making cosplay. But throughout the years, I actually noticed that it's not like, like doing it like physically, that's like the most important part, but actually wearing the character and meeting people maybe from the same fandom um, that like hype you up and want to take pictures with you, or maybe want to group up with you if they're doing like cosplay from the same fandom. And like, that's the best part for me because like when I, when I wasn't like attending conventions, I, I grew up like in a very small town, very close-minded, and there weren't like too many people liking, like openly liking anime and games and stuff. It was like, you know, for losers. Um, so I didn't have like many friends to share this passion with. Um, so when I started like attending conventions, I actually found so many people like me, like liking my same stuff. And that's like the best part for me, like having the chance to meet like new friends, new people, even for just one time um, and sharing moments with these people. For me, it's like the best part. Hope, that you are me, you're me. Uh, uh, before saying what I love, I just want to say that things is, is uh, changed and is going to change more. Uh, we start maybe in a, uh, a, a year that people want to make uh, performances and contests. So we three start to make performances before Facebook and Instagram, TikTok start to be so, uh, uh, so focused on only picture even before actually Facebook was created. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I think I started before Facebook uh, uh, arrived in, uh, in Italy because it was like 2009, I started in 2006 and uh, we all used the forums that now I don't oh, know yes, I how many people know so what, what is a forum. Now we have groups on Facebook. So the things change, and when I start, I start only to make a contest. Uh, not so many pictures. Uh, yes, I love to make pictures with uh, uh, people, uh, a child, uh, and a big family that go there to, to, to make pictures. But the, the focus was on contest. And in Italy, we had a lot of contests. Every, um, Every convention had uh, contests with the performances, so everything was focused on that, on the beginning. So, for me, it was important to make a good costume for the performance. Things changed. So now with the picture, maybe uh, you don't give so much uh, importance to little details, because in the picture, you won't see that. And for me, it's really um, sad 
because uh, uh, in Italy we had a big uh, um, selection for World Cosplay Summit and the uh, European Cosplay Gathering. And uh, at the beginning it was like uh, mm, 30 people, 50 people that want to do that. Now it's like five, 10 couples. Uh, uh, for example, for World Cosplay Summit, the selection, in Italy we, we make the pre-selection because we are too many. Now, mm, I, I want to do that because for me the performance is really important. Because you are in the character, you make a performance on the stage. Uh, so maybe you are shy, but on the stage you left all behind and you change uh, so yeah. everything. You were, it's you not were, only the costume, the performance. Yeah. You were judging the cosplay competition yesterday, so that's actually another important or interesting question. What are you looking for when you are judging cosplayers? What are you looking for? Is it the accuracy or is it the performance part? How, how, is it, how important is the performance part? Is it half, half? Or when you are judging a competition, what are you looking for? Actually, we look at everything. Um, we look at the costume, how it is made, uh, what kind of techniques was used for doing that? Uh, materials, fabrics, and basically everything. Uh, how difficult it was to create that kind of costumes? Um, what you are actually doing on stage? Uh, what kind of performance you are going to do if you have just to walk on the stage, just like make a catwalk, or just make a, a performance and interpretation of the costume? Uh, of the cosplay. Uh, if you're doing just a catwalk, we, I ask, normally ask myself, why are you just only doing a catwalk? It depends on the character, or it depends on you, or it depends on the costume. Because maybe a lot of people make these amazing huge armors and then they can't walk in it. They can't even get on the stage. So when you are in a jury, you have to consider everything, basically. There is not only one thing that is more important than the others. And some, in, uh, in some um, difficult contests, because there, maybe there is a huge level, you have uh, the, um, the thing that moves the decision. Sometimes it's really the tiniest little detail. So yeah, we could say that yesterday's per performances were actually really important. Or it could, it could really have the decision. Yeah, yesterday actually the performances, um, we already had an, a, a clear idea, but the performances gave the final, push, the final the portion push, yes. too, yeah. Um, it usually also depends on the rules, of course, of the contest, because every competition from the local ones to, of course, the big ones, the international ones, have their own rules and they really change. Like there is, um, there was like this competition now it changed that's called Euro Cosplay, uh, where basically like costume was 80% of like the final score, right? So if you went there with a very, um, I don't know, um, like complicated costume, but not that much well made um, and you did a very good performance there was no chance to for you like to win something um, but there are like so many people that actually do like so many big armor armors and they maybe don't do like uh, the smaller their tails or like they leave them like a little bit more rough and that like in many countries it doesn't matter because like they like big costumes they like uh, they're like, uh, the rules are the most complicated costume wins. So they're like, it really depends on the country, on the contest, it's, it's very different. And on the uh, judge, the judge of school. Yeah, and for what like concerns yesterday, um, to be honest, I saw, I was so happy because um, there were um, so many people doing like very simple stuff, like walking and like maybe doing like some movements of the character, uh, some other, at like the lines of the cart and they were like um, like playing it, you know, like interpretation was mostly like that. Um, there wasn't much complicated stuff, but it, it felt like genuine from a point of view. I think like many people, um, 
never do competitions or maybe performance and feel more comfortable in doing this. And yeah, maybe it's not like for something that you will do for an international competition, but for a local competition, I think it's great to see many people um, like doing that step and like going on stage and trying to do their, their own thing. And I don't know, I'm proud of everyone doing that, to be honest. I will let them know. <laughs> okay. Um, would you like to add something? Or should we just move to the next question? Would you, would you like to add something? So would you, would you share your opinion? Or should we just move to the next question? Okay. I, uh, I share the, uh, what they do. OK, so. Um, do you have any favorite costumes? Because you, you did all a lot of costumes. I, I saw your page. You have all wonderful costumes. Do you have a favorite? Or because it's, it's pretty or comfortable or because you've worked a lot on it. So what's your personal favorite? <laughs> I think this is one of the most difficult question because everything, everything is your favorite. No, no, because sometimes uh, you have your favorite uh, uh, at the beginning, uh, then it changed with the uh, with years. So you make new, new and new costumes. Yeah, and, yes. and sometimes for me, I mm, my my favorite is not because it's m the most difficult to do that, but just because I, I love it. Okay, but then for let's change the favorite into then. What's the costume you are really really proud of? Because proud of. yes, that's an easier one. Wow, uh, proud, proud, proud. I think the, the, I don't know if you know the um, card captor Sakura. Yes. And uh, I make the earthy card, so a card that seems like a rocks uh, and a heart. Uh, and yeah, so it's a rock imitation. It's a rock. Yeah, yes, yeah, the yeah. And uh, it was the costume for a uh, European cosplay gathering in Japan Expo. Uh, me and uh, the, the other girls with me didn't win nothing, but I was proud because it, that was the first time I used uh, latex with, um, with the form as a, a, co uh, a cover technique. And that was my first time and a, uh, a big prop maker, Volpin Props, uh, I don't know if someone knows that. Uh, Volpin, Volpin was in the, in the jury. And uh, it was uh, like, oh, it seems like a rock. So, oh, yeah, so he, he so really he, liked it. He, he is a, a big prop maker. So I was like, really? Really? You like it? You like it? Oh, so that, 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 that's proud because, you yeah, know. Yeah, that's always nice. And uh, he, he asked me how I do that. that that's the. That's the really big you, compliment you can yeah, get from a yeah, judge. Yeah, yeah. Yes. That, that, that's why I'm proud of it. Um, I'm glad you changed question because yes. not really. I can pick favorites. Okay, I don't have a favorite song. I will die in Stranger Things. Um, I don't have a favorite movie. Like, yeah, I have. I have like some favorites, but I have one favorite. I can't choose. Okay, because it really depends on my mood. So the costume I'm most proud of is probably Aloy from Horizon Zero Dawn because it took me so much time to make it like on and embroidery and there were so many te techniques involved and it really like it was a challenge um, and I was so like happy to make it because it's one of my favorite games and I looked myself in the mirror and I liked it and it's not something that happens often with me. Um, so yeah, and even like Guerrilla Games, the developer of the game, they like retweeted me and shared me and like sent me gifts and stuff uh, because they really liked the costume. So it was like a combination of things. I think that's the costume I'm most proud of. How can I choose between my children? <laughs> you can change to the one you are most proud of, if that's easier. That um, was a big challenge or something. Okay, so when I look at it now, I'm like, what did I done with this costume? But when in time when I did it, I was really proud of it because it was the first time I approached to some different 
techniques and it was the first time I had the style and that type, the wig and everything. Uh, of course, this was Shiva from Final Fantasy XIV. Um, I still play the game. <laughs> it was very hard to change my, uh, my point of view because I normally uh, make a lot of fabric cosplays and everything and it was challenging because I had to style the wig, I had to, to create all the, uh, the, 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 the suite, let's say so. And, and then the stage performance was a huge help because I had the white, the white lenses and I was basically seeing nothing. And uh, it was actually the start of my uh, professional career because I get noticed from, uh, from, the, from Square Enix and they invited me to uh, um, the fan festival of Frankfurt in 2017 uh, as Shiva. And then I, there I started basically to travel around conventions. So I guess this is my most favorite and most proud of. And you have nice memories connected to it. Yeah. When you are working, is there any material that you really like to work with, like your favorite materials? Fabrics. Fabrics, yes. <laughs> Nothing special that you especially like, or something that you really want to try. Like some people, for example, um, they never tried armors. They want to try armors one day. Do you have anything that you didn't try yet, but you really, really want to? Um, I think for me it's prosthetics, um, because I can do like most things like sewing uh, because I studied it, um, prop making because I like consumed Mayans uh, for years uh, trying to learn. Um, I'm recently uh, starting to learn wig making, like wig styling. It's not easy at all. I'm still like a noob, um, but it's very fun. Um, but I have a very big project uh, from World of Warcraft, and it involves like full prosthetics, and it will be a very like nice challenge so do you, for do the you next want to years. Make, like a full mask, when we say prosthetics, like yeah, like full, ma about the full, full mask, yeah, right the mask, and like even like fake muscles and legs yes. and hands and stuff like that, like a full suit on, of silicone or latex, whatever. So yeah, I would like to try that once I have the money because it's very expensive. <laughs> yes, it's not easy. At some point, I wish I could make a full armor because I never did actually a full armor. Uh, my only problem is I don't have the space to store it. So <laughs> I, I think I will wait that I'm going to move in a bigger place or just get and some place to store room. it. Yes, a dedicated storage room yes. all for the cosplays. For me, I, I, th I think uh, I use almost all materials for uh, cosplayers. And uh, mm, the most I think I love uh, uh, it's uh, sculpt. So clay and uh, other uh, smooth materials to do the positive and then the negative with the, the molds and so on. Uh, because I, I like to create with my hands. I don't like really sewing, but I must do that. <laughs> uh, I prefer to make props. I don't like uh, warbler, even if uh, everyone uses that. Why, why, why don't, don't you like it? What, what's the thing I that you I like? don't know why. <laughs> I don't like warbler. I don't like it either. Don't worry. <laughs> that, that's interesting. I don't know why. Really I don't material. like warbler. Uh, I, I like foam. Uh, and I like to cover it with uh, plastic or other kind of materials. I found uh, other mm, with the latex or other things because uh, it's better. Uh, Warbler, uh, it's not, I, I think, it's my opinion, it's not a material for, um, for contest. Be uh, maybe it can be, but you need to use like so many products on it, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like to smooth yeah. it, to make it look good. A and and some, it's and there not are, worth it. And there are other materials that are better. So uh, maybe you lost times, weeks to make it smoother, but you have other materials to do that. 
for example, uh, my first uh, props was made with the fiberglass. No, now no one uses fiberglass. Because it's actually it's not good for the lungs. Yes, it's not good for that. But at the beginning, uh, there, was, uh, there was no forex. There was no warbler foam and other materials. So at the beginning, all the armors uh, we made with the fiberglass. So you have to sculpt uh, the positive and then make uh, the negative and then the positive. I do that one time, so that's it. But it was nice. <laughs> the thing of fiberglass, it, it's heavy as hell. But now I have that, kind, that, that props and I can put them on. And they don't, the magic don't, uh, of Eva form. <laughs> yeah, okay. The Eva but form you, is better. But what I am interested in is because a lot of people are using Vorbla here. I know that. So, or maybe they don't use it because it's expensive. But is it bad for a contest because it's heavy, or you have to prime it a lot, or or why is it bad in your it's opinion? It's so difficult to make it smooth. And you have to put a lot of, of uh, products on it, sand it a lot, um, um, prime it. And even when you do all that stuff, still sometimes it's not clean. And when you have form, it's so easy. It's, it's lighter. It's easier to, to smooth. It's easier to cut. It's easier to uh, heat. It's cheaper. So uh, warbler, I guess warbler is that kind of material that you discover you, some, somehow in your life you are using it. You discover it. You see, okay, I can do this with warbler, but hey, wait, this is better. And you then ch change and change to other materials. It's, it's a step in the creation that you have of cosplay that you're like, okay, it's a good material for something, but there are other materials that are better. And even if you want to make like something that extra clean and extra polite and everything, just use a 3D printer. Yeah, it's like it's it's good for like small details. Like if you have like I don't know things that are very detailed, maybe you can do a base with uh, I don't know foam or something else, and then cover it in warbla, and then you have to smooth it and put a lot of primer and stuff. But again, it's not really worth it. Um, Throughout the years, there were like new Warbla uh, types. Like there is the white one, which is uh, less grainy, so you can smooth it like way easier. But it's still like very costly. Um, and there is like Vibra, which works basically like Warbla. It causes like Warbla, and it's smooth. Like it looks like PVC when you. What was the name again? Tibra. Oh, yes. yes. Tibra. Yeah. Yes. Isn't it that uh, I worked with it once, and my only problem was it takes, uh, so you touch it, and you have your fingerprints yeah, and everything. Yeah, because you need to, you need to wet your, your fingers, Very and anyway, sensitive. it's not good for big pieces. You still have to use it for like small details. I prefer Tibra and yeah, yeah, same. When yes. I have to use this kind of materials, I use Tibra most of the time. I use Warbla only for like a very diff like complicated shapes and then I cover it maybe with fabric. Only like that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's an interesting thing to, to know actually. But when we are talking about materials now, I want to go into the 3D printing topic a little bit because here um, in this country it's like a big discussion right now because you know there are more and more 3d printers they are I think evolving. it's everywhere <laughs> yes and a lot of people are starting to make details with 3d printing and some people some cosplayers say are saying that yeah but but if I, I am in the contest and I make something per hand then there is another cosplayer that lets it make with a machine so it's a difficult thing to judge the important part of course is the pattern if you do do this cosplayer know how hard it is to create a pattern? You have to have the programs, you have to have the skill, you have to have the experience, and you have to spend a lot of hours to shape it, to design it, to create the pattern. Then, of course, even if you are going to print it, it's not like beep and it's coming out, because you have to do the right supports, 
put, uh, check that the resin is correct, that everything is put in, in the right, correct line, if they are not um, crossing each other and everything. So it's not that easy how it could be. For example, for me, it's easier to craft instead of to print. And uh, after that, of course, you have to, you don't take the, pic the, the piece from the printer and, oh, it's ready, Psh, with the, I, I paint it on and it's ready. No, you have to smooth it, to sand it, eventually to, leave the, to, uh, to um, remove the lines. But it depends if you are printing in PLA, so it's basically plastic, or in resin. Resin leaves a bit less uh, lines, but still you have to remove uh, the, um, the, 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 what support, remains the of the support. Yes, exactly. The support so you have to smooth it, then you have to prime it, and then you have to paint it. It's, it's not that, and even if you have to, for example, to attach the part on a costume, you have to make the supports to attach it. So it's not that easy, it's not like it could be like, oh, it's a machine, I push a button and it came out, the, the finished piece. So it's basically the same of crafting, but it's computer crafting. It's another way. I think the pattern uh, is the most important part. Like, if someone comes in, like in the prejudging room and says, "Okay, I did this uh, with 3D printing. I made my own file, my own pattern." Um, that for me is like extra points. Um, it if also they, depends. If they just download it, then it's not okay. I mean, it also depends, like, on the percentage of the costume. Like, if if it's all 3D printing, it's just one technique, and you didn't like do your file. Yeah, like it's you it's, didn't we, do we could that say, much. We could say it's the same when you want to sew something, and someone makes the pattern for you. So you just have to cut it, but the pattern is but ready. But that's, that's actually, I think it's harder. Like when you when you work with fabric, you need to know how to pin it, how to sew it, like in a certain mode. Maybe you need to change um, some things from the pattern uh, to adapt it, etc. That's like an, the next step. Once you have your your like three D printing file, you print, you attach the pieces, and then you need to prime it. So it's more like form. It's my, it's more like working with form. Um, but yeah, like I don't necessarily take points away. I'm talking about like international competitions, competitions where like you making the costume is like the, the main point, okay? Not local competitions. Um, but it's like if you like don't make your own pattern and just have your costume printed and you just like spray it, you don't even like prime it to take the lines away. It's just like. You didn't do much. It's not the same as like building a whole costume with form or making a big like dress, you know? So, yeah. I think there is another topic linked to the 3D printing that is embroidery. Yes, actually that's, that's true okay. because it's the same. Oh, it's the almost the same because every time people say, oh, okay, she used the machine to embroider that. Okay, but you know how to do that because mm, the machine for uh, the embroidery, it, it, you can use it in, in, mostly in, uh, in two ways. One, you made the vector files you put uh, into the machine and uh, the machine do it for you or you use the vector file and you say to the machine which are the points that she has to do. So point by point. I don't know in English how to say la punciatura. I don't know in English how to say. Uh, so you say to the, uh, to, you, you say the machine, the points, uh, how you, you can make with the, your hands. So uh, on the so machine, you, you can decide which parts to make by hand. And uh, uh, yes, you say, uh, okay, you put, the, you take the line and you do like, I don't know, uh, a, a sample or a tangle. You say, okay, you do that with point, 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 point. It's a really, really long work. And uh, uh, most, um, if you make mm, 
thousand points, the embroidery is better. So you use time to do that. It's the same with your hands. So you make like the suit. It's not the same. Yeah, it's not the, the same, but if you use the machine properly, points for you. And uh, I, uh, so sometimes people say, oh, I do that with my hands. She do with the machine. But you have to, to know how to do the machine. Yeah, that's true. So yeah, it's a really similar thing. Like uh, 3D printing is like, yeah, the part of the armor making or accessorize and, and this other one is for the sewing. So, but yeah, it's really a very, very similar topic. Um, when you are working on your costumes, like, do you always work alone or do you prefer to work in teams or with a friend or is it always a solo pro project for you? Normally, most of the work, uh, especially the sewing work, I'm doing with, uh, at my place, on my own, and some of, most of the uh, prop parts or uh, 3D printing, I make it with my boyfriend because he has the 3D printer at his home. So we are working on them together, but most of the, of the, most of the, the rest of the work, I'm doing it by myself. Like even fabric research, material research and everything, I do it by myself. Um, I usually do everything on my own. Um, sometimes I'm too stressed. Maybe the convention is coming. Um, I don't want like to overwork myself because I'm tired and stuff. So maybe I ask my partner. Um, most of the time, to be honest, we are a team. So we work together. <laughs> we make cosplays together. Um, so it's. Of course, when it comes like to competitions, uh, which are not, we are not doing much uh, lately, mainly because of the pandemic. But yeah, uh, when it comes to competitions, of course, everyone does like their own thing. Um, but there's always like emotional support. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, mostly uh, I do things like partnering with my partner. <laughs> Um, uh, a question, because you two are working together. When you are, you are living together? We, are you living together? Yeah, so, yeah, we live okay, together. So Otherwise, this, it would be impossible. Do you have this thing like, you are both crafting, like, this is my, this is my mess, that's your mess, or do, are you making a mess together? No, it's... <laughs> so is, is, is this your mess, so a separated mess, or a really big mess that you make together? So, yeah, no, me, uh, he is very messy. They're very messy, okay? Like, they always leave everything, like, in the main room. Um, and usually I have to clean it because I'm like, I'm so tired. You are, you are making the mess and she is cleaning up. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, uh, we really support each other. And especially when, like, one has a competition to do and the other one doesn't. Like, it would be like this in October. So... I tend to be more like a mom when it comes to this. <laughs> no worries. I knew what, what, what I was going for <laughs> when I chose you. Normally, I have to admit, even if me and my boyfriend are not living together, at his place, his mess is actually my mess. Because I bring my mess from my place to his place. <laughs> so basically, he is like, again, you and your mess. Yeah, again. <laughs> the reason I was asking this because yesterday in the competition we had uh, two people who are living together. They were competing, and I know that they are like, "That's your crafting piece. That's mine. I did this mess. You don't, don't step over don't this cross line." Don't cross the line. <laughs> but you, you are working alone, or do you have someone? Do you sometimes uh, I, share the uh, mess? I prefer. <laughs> no, I, I prefer share. And support emotionally when you, you because one of my best friends are a cosplayer Nadia SK, and uh, I start making the um, the big competition with her, so we share uh, mostly everything. Uh, also because as a team, uh, she know how to do well because uh, it is uh, um, for for work her job is also sue for me no. So many times for uh, the group, uh, I make the props and she sew both costumes. So I make props uh, for both and she yes. make the, uh, the sewing part so for both. It's a teamwork, yes. Yes, a teamwork. Uh, I do, um, I 
I know how to do that better. Yeah, so but when I you are that. competing as a team, then you can just share yeah, the, the yeah, work yeah, yeah. and because you are a team, you will get judged together. Yeah, also for uh, scenographies, uh, that I'm an architect, so <laughs> I work with the structure for the scenography for uh, performances I made for, uh, for both of us. And uh, maybe she make the music, so uh, I made the scenography and she make the music for the performance. So I prefer like that. But just because the things are better, because I know what to do for something, she, she know how to do other things. So everything is better. And we share <laughs> the stress. <laughs> Actually, you all three were competing in competitions before, right? So is there, um, uh, which is the competition that you are most proud of or that you liked the most? Did you have any favorites? For me, it's World Cosplay Summit. Because in, we, in Japan? In Japan, because we won uh, the, not the first place, but the second one. But the best uh, prize the performance was the performance. Yes, yes, right. yes. We, we won two, two prizes. So the best one was the performances because uh, we go to the gym uh, to, to make the performance months before. You, you had a lot of preparation yeah, going on. Yeah, one, one year, because uh, uh, for World Cosplay Summit, Italy is one of the first group that is selected. Uh, so I we just, have one year to do that. I, I just want to say a few, few words to people, because just that they know what we are talking of. So basically, World Cosplay Summit is like the, a world championship for cosplay in Japan. And every country is selecting a team of two people, if I remember correctly, and those two people go to the finals to the Japan, to the to Japan. And that was the place, second place, and won best performance. Yeah, that was. I'm really proud for that because uh, for the performance, uh, I was like, uh, I don't know how to say in English, like a Buddha, you know, <laughs> like a robot. And uh, Nadia helped me to be more. Uh, uh, fluid, because she make uh, rhythmic gymnastic in uh, w when she was a, sh a child, so she helped me to be more fluid with the movements because we were uh, two um, character for a circus, so we must be really fluid the movement and so on. So that's why I'm proud of it because. Uh, I do for the first time something I never, never, never thought I can do that before. And then World Cosplay Summit is the best because you have a summit with all cosplayers. It, it was rewarding you because love. you put the work in and, and it yes, was... Yes, but you, it's a summit. It's not a real competition at the end. You met so many people from all around the world so you can share your passion. And uh, sometimes uh, uh, it's um, many friends that you have to, um, for, for years. Also, it's in the other part of the world, you still have friends. N not because Instagram or Facebook, but because you, you share one week, because what, Cosplay Summit yes, is one yes. week, 10 days, I don't remember. So you share, so you share every time, uh, dinner, breakfast. Uh, so it's really nice. Tears. And stress. Yes, and, and stress. <laughs> <laughs> no, because a, a, a really funny thing about World Cosplay Summit, it's for J Japanese, Japanese, it's not uh, a competition. So the same day, I don't remember your, your year, but... It's 2016. Uh, in our year, the same day of the competition, they ask you to put two costumes. So in the morning you put a costume. Yeah, because they do like a parade. So you are changing like the in the middle of the, the city, yes. and you need to change costume. And, uh, and uh, I, when I told to the organizer, please, can we uh, uh, hours of no, I don't know chill out and uh, relax? Uh, and they say no, we do that for you. So you don't think to competition, and you do other things before the competition. No, it's not like that. I need to relax. I need to focus on the competition. And they put a lot of other things in the same day. So, uh, so you are right at the night for the competition that you are already done. And like how, how can you bring so many? Are you bringing two costumes or do, are, do you have to bring more? 
uh, three or four. It but depends. How, it do depends. how do you fit into the suitcase? Like, how can you bring so much stuff with you on the plane? At the because <laughs> wait, wait, you, do you have to bring stuff for the stage, like uh, backgrounds? Yeah. Or uh, yeah. So, so how do you fit in <laughs> no, the bag? No, the, the, the thing is that you have uh, luggages like a couple, I think. At the beginning, you have the chance to uh, pay more to have more luggages. The Ita another Italian teams, the Luca, Luca, <laughs> Luca and Giancarlo, they they won the first place. And you put, and they put the rules for the other team. Yeah, like they, br they brought with them like 10 big boxes because they had like a, an interactive um, uh, prop like stuff, you know. It was like, so it, take, it took like the whole stage, okay? And they won first place. And so the other teams were like, but we don't have the money to bring all this stuff with us, so it's not really. You know, it's not really fair. Yeah, it's yes. not fair. And they were kind of right, to be honest. I'm, so I'm proud of our team, but still, <laughs> the, I, I can see that. So now you have the rule that you, uh, you can bring on the stage something that like uh, 30 kilos. 40 kilos 30 and kilos. maximum like three props of, of like set measurements. <laughs> and you have to go on the, the, the balance. <laughs> So you, you, put, you put the costume, the props, and you go on the balance, and they say, okay, you can go. You are 30 kilos, so they, they ask you, what's your weight? So you, you, you can say kilos less. <laughs> so you go on the balance and... Uh, yeah, and there are some tricks, like if you have, um, like, mechanical things and you have like batteries you take the batteries away oh. so <laughs> there's like less weight yeah that's it's very fun clever though. that's clever it's fun it's good to know um it must be wcs for me as well because as mogu was saying like wcs it is a competition but it's more like an experience with people from all over the world that share the same passion and basically the competition is at the end of the week okay so you get to know them and spend basically all of your time with them. Um, uh, there are so many events. You take pictures, you meet uh, people, you visit like some uh, special places like in Nagoya. Um, so it's like you share your life for a week with these people. And then you, sh you share the stress, the uh, emotional distress. <laughs> Um, I, I and everything related costumes, to the competition. You ha they have to repair sometimes. Yeah, no, I, the, the, best, the best memory I have is that uh, you do like the rehearsals uh, on the Friday or Thursday, it depends on the year. And uh, our year, there was the Brazilian team. They were um, wearing Final Fantasy and they had the Sephiroth sword, like very long one. And it got broken during the rehearsals. Um, so they were like crying and they were desperate. So um, me, Valentino and other teams, like three, four other teams, basically locked up in their room. Uh, we brought all, over, all of our stuff you to fix that for it. And then they, like other teams came with like beer and stuff. And we basically made like a room party to fix this fucking sport. <laughs> that, it was really great. It was like... It was amazing, though, because it's like there's so much cooperation. Uh, there's so much like support between teams. It doesn't feel like a competition. It feels more like, OK, we hype up each other, and we go on stage, and we do our best, and we have fun. And who cares who wins? It's, it's literally like that. Like, I'm not saying, it, like, yeah, I don't know. It's getting, getting to that competition to Japan, it's already a prize by itself. Exactly. Uh, yes. like, it's what, it's, the mentality is like once you're there, you already won because like you're the you're, best, you of, best your of your country. Yeah, yes, exactly. Right. So it's it's more like about living the experience and yeah, having fun and like uh, hey here after we we went in the, in 2016, um, the Brazilian girl came to Italy from Brazil and spent like two weeks with us and now I'm going to be like a bridesmaid for a wedding in Brazil. So like 
It's, it's, it's crazy because you think you only met these people for seven days, ten days, and yet you get so attached because like there are so many emotions, like so many feelings going on uh, during those days. So it's amazing. Uh, I didn't sadly get the chance to get that much uh, international competition experience, but I have to admit one of the most uh, beautiful experience I had actually was in uh, 2019 before pandemic uh, in Rotterdam for the Clara Co cosplay yeah, cup the Clara Co. and I have to admit most of the mm, friends of, of the cosplayer I know around the, the Europe were people that were there and we made like in three days we are like friends forever because you share so much time with them, even if it's like three days, so much emotion with them that you, you remain connected. And the most amazing part was that when, uh, after, all the, after all the competition and everything, we were just like, really don't even care about who was winning. We were there all around and we were like chatting and like, oh, we are going tonight to have a party. Yeah, we are going to the drink. Oh, I brought you this from my country. Oh, I brought you this other from my country. And when they have, uh, uh, asked us to come, everyone on the stage, we were like, no, we want to eat, we want to drink, we want to party. And it was like one of the beautifulest experience of my life, really. And of course, it was a beautiful experience because I could share for the first time with my partner the stage, and it was very important for me because as a cosplayer, I love to um, get on stage, I love to make a performance, and sharing the performance, sharing the stage with the people you love, with the people, with the person you are together, it's like one of the beautiful things you can actually have. And uh, it was the first time we shared the stage in that kind of competition, it was amazing. And I have only, even if the three days were stressful and getting cosplay, run from the hotel to the, to the convention and everything, it was really stressful. Right now, I remember only the good parts. So only the friends, only the, the parties, only the relation that, creates, that was created in that moment. So I guess we sh everyone should try to make an international competition and try to go to an international competition because there you actually understand what cosplay really is. Yeah, so regarding this, I have the last question because uh, we are almost out of time. Uh, we have a lot of cosplayers actually here who don't dare to try or they just tried. Do you have any advice to beginners, to beginners how they could just get better or how they should choose characters, anything that comes to your mind? It could be obvious, because it actually could be obvious. But when you are making cosplay, basically it starts like a hobby. So you have to have fun, you have to enjoy, you have to be yourself, make the character you love. Uh, even if you just start really small and you uh, don't feel like you did your best or you're not you're not sure what uh, what came out of, of your costume and you're like no but I'm looking ugly I, I don't did the best I don't just you have so much time to improve and to make it better and just don't think only about the costume because mostly cosplay is creating relationships is creating bonds between each other and it should be that the most important part even if you just think about competition, even if you think about uh, getting better, everything, you should remind that uh, you are doing it for yourself and for the people you are with. So cosplay is sharing that passion, not else. Actually, I got the sign that our time is up, so I want to thank you. Uh, not top shot, szeretnék kérni a vendégeinknek. I thank you for being here with us today. And yes, I think we heard a lot of uh, nice information today and interesting topics. So thank you so much. <laughs>